if you have an open mind and you want to know the truth sooner or later you know if you're going to put effort and time you're going to start bringing that information until you're going to really approach these things with open mind and try these things yourself and sometimes it's not just try you might have to try 20 times 100 times before it's going to actually start to work you know, no one's going to tell us what we can publish and what we cannot publish and to keep in to keep ourselves in this position we need to stay independent as much as possible all right this is mike segula from truthfury.com and today we're gonna do a different kind of video different episode where I'm gonna talk about myself, you know. You might see my face or hear my voice more often this year, and um, you know, I felt let's let me just give give a little bit of story, um, a little bit of my background, information about who I am, what I've been doing, what is true theory, how long, you know, what's what's what is our journey like? So, you know, I've been running truefury.com for the last 10 years and we went through quite a journey, you know, we went through an evolution. Um, we started with content probably that was, um, you know, quite controversial, you know, exposing crimes of uh, governments, police, war, politics, conspiracies, all sorts of things like that. And um, over this period, over the last 10 years, I think when I was going through a lot of, um, you know, transformation myself, um, I think the mission and the content that we've been publishing also shifted a lot. So, you know, I decided that there is way too much negativity in the media. You know, there is so much and also alternative media. You know, everyone is pointing fingers all the time. And I said, noticing how it makes a lot of people uncomfortable. You know, I feel like the, at the moment, I feel like, um, you know, we need to understand that there are problems in the world. But once we know there are problems, we need to focus on solutions and we need to focus on, you know, changing ourselves and trying to do our best to improve the situation. So when you point fingers all the time, you're not really helping so much, you know, it's important. This is the first phase you need to understand there are problems. So obviously someone has to do the job and point fingers, but, um, I think there is not enough of um, media outlets that actually try to inspire people, try to show solutions, try to show positive side as well. So our stories and our journalism became much more balanced in recent years. You know, we started sharing stories that inspire people, you know, solution orientated uh, things about, you know, sustainable endeavors, companies, people who are creating some positive impact on the planet, you know, just to make people think and show them that there is a lot of good going on. There is a lot of potential, you know, and if you look at media, you know, it's like 90% of the stuff is negative. It's like always just fear mongering, hate, you know, the world's going to end every day, all this kind of stuff. And I think this is not exactly how the world is. And this is not exactly the way that we can um, move towards a better future. So we, we started shifting, you know, a little bit and creating more content that is more balanced. And, and you know, we still point fingers, we still highlight problems, but we are definitely a lot more balanced now we and um, you know this is something i've been going through as well so it's kind of my personal transformation i think reflected the shift on the website as well 
So, you know, I've been basically um, on this journey of self-discovery, personal growth, and uh, digging into spiritual and metaphysical subjects. And I, one of the biggest realizations um, was that, you know, you need to be the change. So, so really, you know, we should focus as much as possible on being better human beings. And um, it starts from us. So, you know, I'm, I'm far from perfect. I've been working on many, many uh, challenging aspects of my personality, addictions, all sorts of things. But, you know, I'm definitely making a progress. And I felt like, you know, the website, the content should um, also show people these areas. So let me give you some um, little bit of background about myself. Um, so, you know, I, I grew up uh, in Poland. I, I Basically, I was living in Poland till I was 21. Then I moved to the US. I spent some time in Chicago. Then I lived in London for many, many years, uh, 13 years. So I have uh, dual citizenship. I'm British and Polish. You know, I, last two years I've been traveling quite a lot, spent a lot of time in Spain. And, um, you know, I was this uh, person that struggled with conventional education so i literally you know i'm heavily dyslexic and you know i i had a really hard time at school so I, when i was a teenager for example because it was really hard for me to read and write and you know um i would just spend my time doing sports so for example you know i I was really good at sports. So I was like doing aggressive inline skating as a teenager, then kickboxing, martial arts. Um, you know, I actually became a vice champion of Poland when I was 19. So sport was kind of a uh, thing that really, um, you know, interests me always. And, and with, but at the same time I had this, um, you know, inner, desire to understand reality world how things work and also you know i had this deep intuitive feeling that there is more to reality than what we've been told you know that there, there's been just this this kind of inner uh, voice or intuition that was always guiding me and you know i learned that this um this intuition this voice it's always directed me towards uncovering you know more or uncovering truth so let me give you some examples um and by the way you know because of these things like dyslexia i, I really had had hard time with reading for example so Obviously, it improved tremendously over the years when I was working very hard on myself and improving. But I would rather watch videos, you know. Um, I remember period before YouTube, we used to download video content from like torrent websites, all these kind of things. And uh, there was a Google video, I think, at that time. So I was just like first on online videos watching stuff, watching documentaries, watching lectures, like, you know, and then learning from different mediums, different formats. And over the years, you know, it's probably like 15 years now, I've literally watched like, I don't know, like more than 10,000 videos, probably, um, you know, tens of thousands of articles that I've read. Um, you know, hundreds of documentary films, I really like documentary films. And I went to, you know, tons of lectures, seminars, conferences, all sorts of events. So, you know, I spent like full time or almost every moment of my time on learning over the last 
10, 15 years. And it's been not only, you know, theory and education, but also practice. That's, I think this is so important for everyone. Um, so, you know, a lot of people want to research something they're just going to read, maybe uh, do a course, go to university, whatever it is. You know, you look at scientists, for example, who are dismissing paranormal or, you know, mysticism or whatever it is. But their knowledge is very often, um, you know, based on information, but not really practical. They they never went through these experiences themselves. So it's hard really for them to measure something, let's say like spiritual experience, for example, or mystical experience, which is not something you can just create on demand whenever you want, right? It's It happens maybe instantly when in a moment when you do not expect it. So, you know, this is one of the big things and problems for, um, you know, I would say for scientists, especially because it's hard to really, you know, understand the bigger picture. If, you know, you never see, experience these things yourself. That's the first thing. And then, um, you know, it's, you cannot really rep reproduce uh, some of these things under strict conditions you know, because they are just um, happening on not, you know, as in some kind of instant event that no one predicted, right? Like spiritual, religious experiences, right? So what I was doing, you know, because I had this interest in this kind of intuitive uh, you know, quest for understanding reality and, you know, especially I had a lot of interest in like mystical subjects, esoteric topics, you know, teachings, philosophies, spirituality, paranormal, all these different things. So I was always interested in this kind of stuff. I decided, you know, I'm going to start testing these things personally. So, you know, what I was doing, let me give you some examples. You know, I remember reading stuff about um, out-of-body experiences, right? And I think someone gave me a book, I'm not sure. But yeah, so, you know, I, I was reading about people having these out-of-body experiences. And I, in one of the books, uh, they were actually giving some you know, practices that you can do to have, um, you know, conscious out-of-body experience. And I remember trying some of these methods and I think I, I tried like for many weeks and I couldn't get there. And at one time, you know, I, as far as I remember, this was like 12 years ago more, um, the method was that you wake up in the middle of the night, maybe like uh, 4 a.m. something. And because you are in that state where it's easy for you to fall asleep again, you try to keep your mind sharp and focus on some point or whatever. And then you try to, you know, fall asleep, but still keep the mind focused. I mean, I, I don't fully remember this method, but, you know, something like that. And, you know, I remember one time I managed to have something that um, I think was something like out-of-body experience. Um, maybe it was like an out-of-body experience in a dream because I apparently you have like, you know, you have lucid dreams, you have out-of-body, and then you have out-of-body in a dream. But... You know, all these things that I was reading about were there. So, for example, you know, I was reading about how you travel with, um, you float like a ghost, right? And, you know, you have like three different types of speed. One is that you're just floating. The second one is that, you know, you are quite fast, like, 
like a train or something. And the third one is like you think and you find yourself in the place you want to be. So, you know, I was testing these things, everything that I was reading about in the book, I was trying it out and, you know, everything was happening exactly like in the books, you know, like they were talking about sometimes you might see something that it looks like a reflection in a mirror. So, for example, I was in my hometown uh, in the neighborhood I recognized and, you know, the bus stop was flipped the other way around, like, like a reflected in a mirror. So, um, you know, I was like, one of the things I was reading about was um, that you cannot hur hurt anyone or harm anyone. So I felt like, okay, let's test it out. Let, let me punch someone. <laughs> yeah, so I remember this person having, um, you know, I felt like I'm going to punch someone. And I remember seeing this person making strange faces. Uh, it was, everything was like telepathic, you know, so I couldn't hear. It was just like I could see a strange face, for example, you know, someone is... Um, so another thing I, I decided to test was that, you know, I decided to go to a different part of the city using this second speed that I was reading about. And then I felt like, you know, I was reading about sex in astral planes. So I felt like, okay, I want to have sex. And <laughs> basically I found myself uh, on this kind of round staircase with uh, a woman and all I remember that you know looking at her face she seemed like she was flirting with me or something like that um, but I don't remember much more from this we we're kind of like it was all telepathic as well and um, you know I, I think I, I woke up afterwards so I just I don't remember what's happened after but you know this this experience that i'm just describing this is an example how you know you read about something right there is just all these different stories and myths about you know some kind of paranormal experiences whatever it is you know mystical um experiences and then you know if you're gonna put effort into it, like I did, you know, I spent weeks on, like, I think I, I've read two or three books before, and then I spent several weeks trying, trying these exercises blindly, you know, not even knowing that this might work or not. And, and you know, and it paid off, and I learned that this was a real deal. So, um, this is something that a lot of these skeptics or researchers lack. You know, they are not willing to put that energy and effort into these things and try these things themselves. And they rely on some kind of data, anecdotes, information, whatever, you know, and that's not enough. Uh, that's why, you know, they will probably struggle to, to see the bigger picture. You know, another thing that I... I think it's so important and something that I've learned as well. If you want to really like understand the big picture and see uh, some of these things for yourself, you know, like test these things, these myths, these paranormal stories, whatever, you need to approach it with an open mind. So, you, you know, if you have, if you're coming with this approach as a skeptic, and you think, oh, this doesn't believe, I don't believe in this shit, this is bollocks. You know, this intention that you have will bring the reality or attract reality, whatever you're going to see what you want to see. You know, we always attract what we focus on, what we put attention on. So if you are a skeptic, then you know the the stuff you're gonna be finding or see it's gonna reaffirm your belief you know if you have an open mind and you want to know the truth sooner or later you know if you're gonna put effort and time 
you're going to start bringing that information. So, you know, I've seen that a lot. Um, you know, the more open I was and the more curious I was, the more all these different experiences started, started unfolding for me. So, um, you know, like, let me give you an example. Like, actually, we interviewed uh, Daniel Pinchback, who's an author focusing quite a lot on psychedelics. And, uh, you know, he was talking about, like, how he used to investigate crop circles and in England, you know, and it was like he would, for example, invite a friend from whatever, U.S. or somewhere that was quite open-minded and whenever they would go to look for some new crop circles they would find some really amazing interesting patterns right that completely you know looked like a real deal but for example when his other friends came over who were very skeptical where he would go with them and uh, find some ridiculous i mean really poorly made uh, crop circles that made him look embarrassed so it's just because you know like the the attitude the approach kind of you know had to match what they would see you know it's it's all about like whatever whatever way you're going to think about law of attraction programming of your mind you know um you know it's a it's an observer it, kind of relationship you know it's like um you see what you put focus on what you put attention into you're gonna see that so that's why i'm repeating it over and over it's extremely important to be open-minded and be willing to know the truth because your intentions matter you know so, you know, as I mentioned, I was like really digging into these fields where, and my approach was just to try these things myself, you know, test them myself. And I really put a lot of energy to try so many different things, you know, that I read about. I, I took part in all sorts of rituals. Sometimes they would end up with bad consequences as well. So it's something to be um cautious of but you know this approach allowed me to understand reality on a much deeper levels and see things for myself so let me give you and you know over the years it's been hundreds of these experiences you know i'm, I'm just giving you some couple of you know examples but for example um around 12 years ago i was also interested in you know these healing methods like reiki um you know i started reading some stuff about it i was doing qigong at this time i actually practiced qigong for like three years and you know qigong is this chinese form of um energy work which is you know um you know you basically like all these cultures like Chinese have chi, Japanese have ki, um, you know, India, they call it prana. So this is like, this is the life force, you know, it's like your electricity in your body, basically, more or less. And, you know, Chinese developed systems to enhance flow of this energy, right? Um, so it's Tai Chi, it's Qi Kong, and um, so I started experimenting with this stuff, you know. And what Chinese say is that disease starts first on an uh, energetic level. So this is why, for example, acupuncture is based on unblocking, uh, you know, blockages in the flow of electricity. You know, meridians are called these energy channels. But we have, uh, all, you know, apart from like the small meridians all around our body, uh, we have chakras, which are, you know, the big, big meridians. They are like the bigger energy channels. And, you know, so they were talking about 
how like okay the, the disease first starts on an energetic level and then um you know it manifests physically right so i remember when i was doing qigong you know at the beginning for example i would you know catch a flu or you know was coughing or something and i was doing this exercise you know for my chest where you kind of try to increase the flow of energy around your chest and i remember when i was doing that during you know being a little bit ill i had this kind of strange feeling in my chest which was like something was almost like breaking like you know you are kind of unlocking there was like a blockage basically in energy flow and when i was doing that exercise it was like you had this feeling like something was um you know unlocking or whatever so i started noticing a lot of these things i started feeling energies you know i started for example one of the simplest things um, that you can try is to just hold your palms together um, and imagine that you have a bowl in between your palms and uh, keep breathing and just try to maybe after one or two three minutes try to make small movements and see constantly imagining that bowl try to see if you feel anything you know and um, when you do qi kong and these practices you start feeling things so so it's almost like you know you can feel something like your hands are underwater and there is like this um you know something like you can feel um you can feel resistance you know this is you can try it out maybe you can feel something obviously it's different when you practice regularly you know a lot then you start feeling that so when i was doing qi kong and these uh healing methods i started feeling my chakras you know i started having like this energy kind of like tingling in my forehead in my left hand you know i i learned that my left hand is minus which absorbs the energy right hand is plus it, it gives it away so you know very often like after a training for you know years when i would breathe in i would feel my left hand like tingling in the moment literally like two seconds after i'm doing the breath right and then at the same time forehead and you know I, I, i've done like tons of these exercises and tons of these meditations and practices and you know i started seeing all these things you know i was reading about chakras then i could feel these chakras you know all these things and and i just started going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and um you know when i was practicing like um you know methods similar to reiki was a kind of was a slightly different method i think it's called king's method um you know from Aeterius society one of the interesting things that i was reading about you know again like people might think it's crazy but you know i've tested it myself so i can i could see if this stuff works or not and it, until you're gonna really approach these things with open mind and try these things yourself and sometimes it's not just try you might have to try 20 times or 100 times before it's gonna actually start working you know so so i was reading about um absent healing you know so absent healing basically the idea is that you you try to visualize a person that might be you know anywhere in the world and you you know you imagine for example whatever this person in white bubble like something like that you know so i started you know this the way i approach thing was just to test these things myself so you know i started experimenting with my mom who was you know i was in england she was in poland and my mom had some pain in her knees so one time you know we were doing this session where i was just like 
speaking with her through Skype, you know, and I was focusing uh, on her knees and just like, you know, visualizing white light around her knees and around her body and just doing it for like half an hour, basically. And after half an hour, you know, I, I started heating up a little bit, like my body started heating up. And the moment when I felt like I'm heating up, my mom said, oh, my knee is heating up. It was the same moment after half an hour. So I was like, wow, this is really works. Unbelievable, right? And, you know, I don't know, maybe, you know, it's my mom, maybe you have connection, maybe it works better with people you have some connections with. I don't know. But it was one of these hundreds of cases when I try these things myself. And, um, you know, again, like it was some kind of confirmation that maybe there is something to these things, you know, maybe all these myths, all these stories, there is a lot of truth in these stories, you know, you know, think about these archetypes, like, you know, we think about ghosts, like Casper, you know, floating. And then when you have an out of body experience, you're actually floating, right? So, um, this is, I think all these myths, they are based on some real things, real situations, real stories. And, you know, I don't really want to go in details here because when I started my journey with these experiences and testing them out, and by the way, when I was doing that Qi Kang practice for three years and experimenting with healing and meditation and other things. And I tried like 50 different types of meditation. You know, I had like all sorts of crazy experiences. Like I remember doing a meditation and I, I, I don't really remember exactly what kind of meditation it was. So one of these many meditations I was reading about and trying. Well, what happened was that um, I had an orgasm in my whole body while meditating. So it was like, the feeling was like the same as normal orgasm, but it was like in inside my body, like everywhere. And that was during a meditation. So that was just like one of many, many, many things that I've tried and experimented with. And um, so, you know, I, I don't want to go too much into details here because, uh, you know, like I said, I just started this journey. My my approach was, I was curious. I was willing to do put the effort and work to see if these things are real or not. You know, sometimes that would mean you know weeks of trying something. You know, so I had a lot of discipline as well. And um, and you know, it started this journey and. Over the last maybe 12 years, when I really started having a lot of these experiences and trying these things myself, I just op opened myself to a rabbit hole. <laughs> it just took me so deep that, you know, now the stuff that I'm doing and, you know, what, I'm, what I've experienced is just a whole different level. Like, like these, these experiences I'm mentioning, 12 years ago, whatever, that's like, that was just the beginning. So I, I don't really want to go in, you know, too deep here because a lot of the stuff goes like really is it's extremely controversial. Probably, you know, if you're having a hard time believing in some of these things I just talked about, you would have a lot more hard time uh, believing <laughs> into some of the things I've been doing in recent years, but there will come time when I will start, you know, sharing more of these experiences and opening uh, people's minds more. So I just wanted to give you some kind of glimpse into uh, what I've been doing, you know, what's been my journey, you know, what is um, I've been learning and if I can give you some kind of tips on 
some of the most important uh, takeaways from my journey over the last 12 to 15 years. You know, I would say that meditation is definitely a very, very important practice. You know, I've been meditating 12 years already. And just to give you an idea, like, um, I think it was last year or a couple of months ago, I was in Barcelona with my girlfriend at that time. And we, um, we were at this science museum and there was this kind of game there where, you know, two people sit down um, and uh, they measure your brain waves and basically you don't do anything. And, you know, this game allows you to push a metal ball towards the other person with your brain waves only. And whoever has more harmonious brain waves is actually pushing the ball. And, you know, I just sat down, didn't do anything completely. And the ball just went rolling. So it, it showed, and uh, there was actually um, some kind of whatever it is, EEG or MRI, I'm not sure what it was called, but you know, that you could see the um, statistics in the, the, the graph. And um, definitely it was, was very harmonious. So, so literally after meditating for the last 12 years, like my brain waves shifted, changed already. And, um, you know, the benefits that I see, like it's, it's, you know, it's just tons of benefits. Like one of the things is creativity, you know, ideas. I think that, you know, you can get a lot of really interesting ideas. You can be more intuitive. Um, you know, you can kind of de detach from situations to not react uh, impulsively, for example. So, um, yeah, I mean, like, I recommend to start. Meditation is extremely important. Um, and I think, you know, like if you develop your intuition, what is really important is always try to rely on your intuition. And it's like not everyone has strong intuition. And we, you know, the, the world we live in teaches us to like do things against our intuition often. Like, you know, you, you have this feeling it doesn't feel right, but everyone else is doing it. So you feel like, oh, whatever, let me do it. And then we kind of, suppress that and that's i don't think this is the right thing to do things and i you know whenever i try to do that it's always taught me to not do it so um but you know uh, you can research um how to tune into your higher self and there is actually an interesting book called surrender experiment um that tells the story of a guy who is relying on synchronicities and whatever was unfolding in his life. And he basically, you know, he built an amazing life. So he was meditating a lot and then relying on synchronicities. And I think that's like, the more you meditate, the more you kind of become in tune. And when you start relying on these synchronicities and intuition, you're actually opening um you know you you becoming more in the flow you you are living like you attract the right stuff the right people the right situations all these kind of things so that's why it's so important to like learn these things you know because your life can um you know be more aligned with your true path you know let's say i don't want to go too much into details here because it's a big subject um at some point i'm gonna do a video about it yeah so another thing i wanted to talk about is that you know two years ago i published an ebook um it's free available for um everyone who's gonna join our mailing list so you can get it at truththeory.org and 
you know, you sign up for our mailing list, you get some emails from us, and then you get a free ebook that I wrote. So it's um, it's fifty something pages, and you know, it's already more than two years old, and a lot of my practices changed as well. So you know, I'm always experimenting, and I'm always trying new things and then I kind of adjust these things and sometimes I'm getting bored so I just going to do something different but basically the book is like if you are on into personal development you want to learn a little bit more this is a good start you know it's not like super advanced uh, stuff you know it's more for beginners I would say but it's it's a good start it's easy to read it's only 50 pages I'm showing a bunch of different concepts and tips so you know it's called growth hacking tips and rituals for optimal living um, and you get it at truthfury.org um, you know another kind of tip that i have something i've been really enjoying recently is a wim hof method you know you probably heard about wim hof aka iceman there's like 60, he's breaking world records with cold, like climbing Mount, Mount Everest, wearing shorts or swimming under the ice with one breath, like 70 meters or something. The guy's 60. <laughs> it's like insane. But I mean, like he developed a very, very simple and very powerful method that you can do very easily and quickly you know it just it's you can spend like 10 minutes a day or twice a day or something so i use it like a couple of times a day to take a break you know because it kind of i feel much better after doing it for like five to minutes and that's you know the part of his method is breathing like rapid deep breathing and holding breaths and then um you know the second part is the exposure to cold but try try it out with um, breathing just search on youtube wim hof method and you can see videos you know i think he has an english version which is 11 minutes and just try it you know try it a couple of times whenever you want to do these things you try it a couple of times you know you don't try it once and oh, it doesn't work whatever i don't like it you know you gotta give it a try for couple of days minimum you know because that's how these things work uh, with some of these meditations i've been doing you need to give it a go for like three weeks before you're gonna start seeing benefits you know so um yeah i recommend that to everyone you know even like my mom started doing it and uh she is you know she tells me that she remembers her dreams she's like 60 so so if she can do it everyone can do it you know and another thing i wanted to uh, mention is what's happening currently with censorship so you know we are i don't know maybe you've been living under the rock i don't know but what's going on is like for the last three years um you know social media giants and internet giants they started censoring information like crazy you know whatever is that um is too controversial you know they can ban and there is no accountability for this stuff really and that's became a big problem for alternative media you know i've i've seen countless examples where youtubers bloggers website owners you know independent media companies they would lose following have their pages shut down um or you know they they get demonetized so there is there is um an effort to silence people who you know who are questioning the mainstream you know look at julian assange you know the guy exposes crimes of the government he's being 
are punished and prosecuted. You know, it shows you how corrupt this system is. You know, someone who is actually exposing the crimes is getting punished, right? It just shows you how everything is inverted and, you know, how corrupt everything is. So it's happening, um, you know, we've been experiencing quite a lot of this stuff as well. Whenever we publish some controversial things, we were having ch ch challenges. And I've been talking to some friends who run similar companies, similar websites, media organizations, and everyone is really having a hard time. So, you know, I think this is uh, where like people who support us, who um, listen to us, who like, you know, read our content or watch our videos, whatever, like you can take part and, um, you know, it can also help out because we need to work together. You know, we have to, um, you know, in order to make the world a better place, we have to kind of collaborate. You know, it's like, so sometimes it means that, you know, you just share content, like keep sharing stuff, you know, keep um, posting, you know, try setting up accounts on websites that are alternative as well, like Minds or Bitchute, some of these conscious brands that are, um, we are on minds.com as well. If you look for Truth Theory, you're gonna find us. We have like 5,000 people followers there. And um, because, you know, what's happening is that we gave our power to these big corporations and then they, you know, they, they do what they do, you know? So we gotta be careful um, and, you know, whatever there is you can do, like what we, you know, apart from the fact that, you know, we've been shadow banned, like the, the reach on social media just is ridiculously low now. It's harder and harder to reach our own supporters, our own followers, you know? I remember days like the, what we had, videos that would get millions of views you know i think the biggest the most popular video we had was like 40 million views now these videos get like 5000 10000 it's just insane you know but like celebrities you know talking about some bullshit they get all the views or you know it's like it's really it's a it's a purposely uh silencing you know alternative views and um and it's it's really uh it's it's becoming more obvious and you know in order to continue we need support so so obviously sharing you know spreading information joining on different platforms that are more privacy orientated and all these things like minds bitchute um that's definitely can help but also um you know like one of the things because we've been demonetized heavily as well like a lot of the content is controversial like we cannot monetize these things so we produce content we pay writers and you know other tons of other expenses but then we were not able to make any money from it and that makes a situation even harder for us to continue because we are, you know, we're completely independent. So, you know, we compete with like big brands that have deep pockets, investors, you know, all these different things. And we're completely self-reliant, grassroots, independent. And for us to have that freedom, editorial freedom that we can publish whatever we want, the way we want, more or less, obviously, because of censorship. But, you know, no one's going to tell us what we can publish and what we cannot publish. And to keep in, to keep ourselves in this position, we need to stay independent as much as possible. And we need to finance what we're doing. So. Yeah, so for those of you who want to help us out a little bit, uh, we recently launched Patreon page. 
where we have some really affordable options and uh, if you're going to support us you're actually going to get access to exclusive content q a live q a sessions with me and i'm also offering one-to-one -one coaching and mentoring with some of our supporters and i'll explain more about one-to-one uh, -one coaching uh, at the end of this podcast and um you know podcast is like this year i started a podcast it's called truth theory podcast this is like episode zero and we actually had eight uh, episodes already we have some really interesting guests coming uh, i already have like a couple of interesting people booked and you know we gonna basically we interview people um that are change makers, free thinkers, people interested in spirituality, personal development, uh, activists, filmmakers, musicians, artists. We're gonna have uh, Parallax, British rapper, conscious rap artist. I love his stuff, like it's doing like real, real hip hop. Um, you know, Aaron Apke is a YouTuber into spirituality um yeah we're gonna have some interesting people and we already had very interesting people you can check out uh episode with um you know lubomir arso who produced the movie called in shadow it's one of the best animated movies out there it's like 30 minutes you can find it on youtube in shadow uh, we had um, Ben Stewart, who made Kaimatica, Esoteric Agenda, Psychedelica, Limitless, on Gaia. We have a lot more power than we're stepping into. And yeah, I mean, like Kaimatica right here, you know, this movie also helped me understand that this universe really is a living, breathing, thinking organism, and it's not separate from me at all. Yeah. So really interesting guests, interesting people, and we're gonna get more. And this again, like you know, um, this stuff is free. Our podcasts are free, available in video and audio. You know, on all the major platforms, you can just search for True Theory Podcast or go to uh, truefury.com forward slash podcasts, and you can see, you know, some of these episodes. And it's free, you know. So. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, there is a lot I could talk about and um, a lot of experiences that I had, but let's take it one step at a time. I don't want to be um, boring you people as well. So, yeah, I mean, once again, you know, if you want to get our free ebook and join our mailing list, you just go to truthfree.org. It's a separate domain that we have only for the ebook. Um, you know, check out the podcast, just type in, in Google truth theory podcast, and you're going to find it in all places, whatever you listen or watch your podcasts, whether it's Spotify or Google podcasts or Apple podcasts, or, you know, whatever, whichever place you're using, whichever service, um, remember to follow us on YouTube as well, because we we're growing on youtube slowly but we're going to be creating a lot of video content as well so um you know consider subscribing on youtube and minds.com minds is great we're we're publishing content on minds on a day-to-day -day basis um you know it's easy to sign up and follow us on minds truth theory on minds minds is an independent um you know, social media platform with free from censorship and uh, encrypted. So they're much more uh, conscious, privacy oriented and all this kind of stuff. And there are some nice people that work behind. So I recommend Minds. Yeah, I mean, you know, ask me questions um, and you know any kind of guests you want to see on our show like please let us know like maybe in the comments 
Thanks for checking out episode zero of True Theory Podcast. And my name is Mike Sigola, and thank you for uh, tuning in. Hey guys, Mike here. Just a quick note. I'm currently offering one-to-one mentoring and coaching through our Patreon page. Um, So as some of you know, I've been interested in personal development for 15 to 17 years. And during this time, I really spent enormous amounts of energy into researching and practicing different techniques. So I'm offering one-to-one video calls through Patreon and this is really affordable as well. So, um, you know, some of the things that I can help with are to do with starting an online business, building personal brand, increasing happiness, um, you know, improving mental and physical health, stress reduction, building confidence and self-esteem, finding your passion, discovering your life purpose, uh, spiritual development and going through spiritual awakening and many other things. So check it out. It's patreon.com forward slash true theory. It's P-A-T-R-E o n dot com forward slash true theory